If you go to any person who's played the Archon quest up until the end of its current storyline and then ask them who the Electro Archon is, oddly enough, two names are mentioned instead of one. Raiden Shogun, the Empress of all of Inazuma, who out of the blue decided to take visions and inlay it on her grotesque statue that towers over the capital city. Ye Miko, the knowledgeable and mysterious chief priestess of the Shrine Maidens, residing in the tallest peak of Mount Yogo in the Grand Narukami Shrine. No one really knows who from the short questline that was given to us. But what if I told you that we might be in the midst of a crisis of a god who wants a new world, or that we might be pitted with two Electro Archons, or that we might be seeing a desperate ruler saving her own kingdom from what we do not yet see? Hey guys, what's up, Aru? And in this video, I want to make some theories regarding who Bal is and what the heck is happening <laughs> around Inazuma. I say who Bal is because it's pretty vague if Raiden Shogun is the current Bal or not, or if she is, but not really. But one thing's for sure though is that Raiden Shogun does look and feel like a powerful ruler of Inazuma. Now then, disclaimers, I am of course not going to be predicting things 100% correct. So please hold your comments and take what I say with a bolder sized grain of salt. Developers also so often mix one thing with another instead of sticking to one type of mythos to keep things different and interesting to their audiences. So do with all my theories what you will. And without any more delays, here are four theories on Baal and the future of Inazuma's story quests. Starting off strong, we'll go straight to the huge statue of the omnipresent god that Raiden is making. The name isn't too much to go on, but it also goes by the name Thousand Arm Hundred Eyed God. This is mentioned by Zhongli's dialogue before we travel to Inazuma. Now a Thousand Arm Hundred eyed god can also be found from Bodhisattva Avalokitesvara. We'll call it Avaloki for short. Now Avaloki in Buddhism is the embodiment of compassion and one of the manifestations of Avaloki is, as you guessed it, a thousand-armed hundred-eyed god. He is still Avaloki but with a different title, with the translation being the thousand-armed hundred-eyed god. And in this story of the thousand-armed hundred-eyed entity was that Avaloki did all he or she could to free all sentient beings from the world. And in doing so, Avaloki ended up splitting his head into pieces and his arms were shattered. In response, the celestial Buddha named Amitabha aided Avaloki by giving a thousand heads and a hundred arms. This allowed Avaloki to help all those in need. However, in Buddhism, Avaloki was a male, but a female somewhat counterpart to Avaloki is Guan Yin, and apparently is also known in Japan as Kanon. It's pretty hard to explain because it's a mix of three religions, so I'll stick to the name Avaloki for context purposes. Now as we talk about Avaloki, you might pick up on what Raiden Shogun is doing, and also, you might think, well, it's gotta be it then. Bal was only trying to help her people and attain the best form she could have for Inazuma. And we probably end up helping her in some way. Now for Yei Miko, celestial Buddhas are known to be enlightened forms of themselves after their journey to Buddhahood. We can call this Godhood. This is also reflective of Yei Miko's knowledge of past individuals and their stories, as well as her complete immunity to the trials any mortal could comprehend. It even seals her role as a chief priestess of the Grand Narukami Shrine, as well as being an old friend of Zhongli, and the possibility of being a previous Archon. Finally, this means that Raiden Shogun really is Baal, albeit currently. But there's one thing that's against this type of theory. The Raiden Shogun isn't helping her people. If anything, she's stealing from her people and would go so far as to hurt and even kill someone to obtain their vision, as seen in our most recent interaction with Raiden Shogun. And why the sudden urge to make a new god? I'll leave the speculation here since we have to move to the next one. This second theory might be the most plausible of all the four theories. This involves a clash of two religions, and we might be met with two gods too. A clash between Buddhism and Hinduism. But Aru, aren't they the same? Oh Jimmy, what you say is heresy and deserves divine punishment. You will be inlaid upon this statue. There is one key difference between the two religions, and it's that Hinduism has multiple gods and practice the art of worshipping those gods as well. Buddhism doesn't have a god, but they have three deities that reach enlightenment that reside in a different realm, completely unrelated to the world that we are in, which means that they also do not meddle in our affairs. We can say that Hinduism slash Celestia is basically the seven archons, with each archon having a branch of godlike beings to defend their home. Mondstadt with the four winds, 
Liyue having Yaksha and the Adepti. Inazuma, however, does not have that at the moment. We could say that each commission is based on the caste system of Hinduism, which is kind of identical if you ask me. The Yashiro Commission focused on cultural affairs, the Kanjo Commission on mercantile and trade, and the Tenryu Commission for warriors and laborers, as well as a fourth one for a ruler, which is the Shogun, if we can put it that way. But in this theory, the Shogun decides to follow a different path one of enlightenment instead of godhood. Therefore, to reach that, she envisions a new deity, an omnipresent deity, and is using the Tri-Commission to benefit that ideal. An ideal of pure discipline, a rebirth that is separate from the once given world of Celestia, a transcendence, a nirvana, if you would, and is trying to secure it by making her own god. But why in the sad and heretical image of the one thing she does not follow anymore, the face of her previous god? Now this theory enforces Raiden Shogun's complete sword prowess of Euthymia, which is similar to reaching enlightenment. Now think about this quote from Hoyo Lab's release of Raiden Shogun's info. For a true unchanging eternity is found only in the stillness that manifests itself when all noise is stripped away. Now imagine Raiden Shogun's state of Euthymia, found only in the stillness inside of her consciousness, where all changes and interruptions are not present except for her state of being. Now this really puts Raiden Shogun's perspective of eternity she pursues, since Buddhism follows discipline, meditation, and mastery of one's own force of will, practicing the five precepts of monkhood and then Buddhahood, refraining from stealing, killing, sensuality, wrong speech, and intoxicants. Well, Aru, this is completely opposite from what Raiden Shogun is doing. Jimmy, be quiet, or I'll put you in a state of euthemia, one you can never be free from. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. When we meet with Ye Miko, she mentions the situation of the swordsman that was perceived to be possessed, and says that he was merely deprived of ambition due to the loss of his vision. And losing a vision also makes the bearer lose memory to a degree, and for a long period of time, be driven to insanity, especially those who've been bestowed great power and has held high expectation for themselves. If you lost your account in Genshin Impact, knock on wood, wouldn't that make you lose ambition to some extent? Now, imagine an emperor whose practice was solely for defending her people, making sure her country is as safe as possible. Her practices and the amount of discipline and control she put into herself to the point of near transcendent state and then suddenly lose that ideal behind her goal, to lose her vision, therefore her ambition, but still remembers what she does, similar to most of the visionless people we meet throughout our questline. How do you think someone would react if that happened? Anyone, even I, would lock myself and start to claw the walls, wondering what to do next. Now wouldn't you think this seals the deal for Raiden Shogun's aggressive, territorial, beast-like, and desperate behavior? This means that Raiden Shogun is still bald though, and Ye Miko was once an Archon, and it would, to a degree, make up for why Raiden Shogun is trying to build the statue in Ye Miko's image, since it might be the one thing that lingers in her blank, emotionless, ambitionless soul. This really seems like the most plausible theory, and would prove to be quite the heart-wrenching plot if it were true. But how would Raiden Shogun lose her vision? Or from a different context, what made Raiden Shogun act in such a manner? The answer here is that in some point of her euthemia and search for a transcendent state, she ends up losing herself inside of her own domain. Same with her vision. She can then only use her power, but not as free as she used to. And once she lost her vision inside her domain, she slowly lost her memory as well as what she was doing, but still remembers the eternity she was after. And for some reason, she still remembers Ye Miko. And we, the travelers, have to find a way to save her with the help of Ye Miko, the previous Electro Archon. I'll leave this one to you guys to mull over. Now this third theory is more of my imagination going wild and wanting to see titans fighting. It's a mix of Japanese mythology, Raijin, and Fujin, and the Buddhist manifestation of Avaloki. In Japanese mythology, Raijin and Fujin are always seen together, and although Fujin is a god of wind, we could paint this as two forms of the Electro Archon as they were passed down through the generations. If you look at Raiden when she pulls out her sword in the cinematic, you can see these circles hovering around her. 
Although it has the Electro symbol, or the symbol of eternity, and somewhat isn't fully round, it is similar to Raijin's drums in every piece of artwork that you see him in. And if you check Miko's hair ornament from behind, it looks very similar to Fujin's bag of winds. You could say, well, it looks different, but she also has fans all over her trinkets. Close enough, right? But in Genshin's storyline, Ye and Raiden know each other very well, and Ye was the first to be the Electro Archon and would soon give her title to Raiden. In this theory, Ye Miko was an old Archon who bestowed her power to Raiden Shogun after the war. But she then moves to Mount Yogo as a priestess, but why? She still holds some power of an Archon to keep watch over Inazuma. But why is Miko a chief priestess in the Grand Narukami Shrine? In the Hindu mythos, Indra, who was also the god of thunder, was known to purge and kill symbolic evil, as well as destroy evil forces, and over time, became less significant, but still played an important role throughout the mythology. Thus, Ye Miko's less significant, but overall still important role is reflected here. She's also unaffiliated with the Tri Commission, making her actions somewhat unprecedented to a degree. A story where Raijin, the Japanese thunder god was a mischief maker and caused havoc in the land of the emperor. Now the emperor wanted to capture Raijin using the help of the god catcher named Sugaru, who then called on the power of a Buddhist manifestation of Avaloki. And again, this is the thousand-armed, hundred-eyed god named Kanon just like in the first theory, and this manifestation of Avaloki was cited as the creator of the new world and was made to capture Raijin, very akin to what Raiden Shogun is doing, with the possible motive to create a new world of eternity, as well as trying to capture an old god, Yei Miko. But in Genshin's story, Raiden was given the power of the Electro Archon by Yei and in hindsight was ready to pull the plug on her whenever she wanted, much like the mischief maker Raijin. So Raiden Shogun now runs the country as the emperor while while Ye would be free to do her own bidding without the rule of Celestia. Raiden would catch on to this and start to make her own world, free from Celestia and Ye's grasp. Ye finds out and then takes her vision away. Raiden loses her mind and some of her power gone. She's then left with the thought of eternity and the thought of Ye, thus her actions in the story. This could be the theory. But the problem here is that Ye Miko doesn't sound like a villain, especially when we meet her in the Grand Narukami Shrine. Ye Miko feels more like an arrogant but knowledgeable person, someone who's very cunning where you wouldn't know her true motives, especially now where we are in the storyline. It's hard to pin this as plausible, but you guys can think of it what you will. This last theory basically ties in all three theories that I mentioned into one story plot that I think would fit the Inazuma arc as a whole. So you've better been listening to your history teacher, Aru Sensei, this whole time instead of skipping to the fourth one. But the three themselves that I mentioned before already have ties to each other to an extent and they're all still plausible on their own. This fourth one basically mm, closes plot holes using Celestia and what they might do to Raiden Shogun as well as following the first and second theory of Raiden Shogun's Euthemia and search for eternity. So in this finale of theories, Ye Miko descends from her throne as Baal more than a thousand years ago and Raiden Shogun is bestowed the knowledge that only an Ark can understand, followed by power and discipline through training over the years. Then the Great War passes, and Raiden was able to recognize her true power as an Archon. Her kingdom was then known as the Kingdom of Eternity. Now this can either go three ways. One, Raiden was going too far in her search for eternity and pursuit of Euthemia and Transcendence. So she ends up going against Celestia's rule to some degree, similar to the second theory, but this time we'll use Celestia as the sole reason for stopping her. Two, Raiden finds out about a different god through her Euthemia that is equal or more powerful than Celestia and can offer peace for Inazuma without ever needing to worship a god, as long as they follow the new rule of Raiden Shogun. And lastly, someone swayed her ideals against Celestia. The cryo archon Tsaritsa is already known to rebel against Celestia, so maybe she had something to do with her in a way? If she does the first two, Celestia takes away her ambition, part of her memory, but not her gnosis. Hence why she can still use such tremendous power. As for the third one, Saritsa might already be inside of Inazuma and is just lying in wait. She might have taken Raiden Shogun's gnosis as well as for some reason being able to take her ambition and then Raiden is left with some of her power. Not really all of her power but still has the amount of power she needs to rule over Inazuma. Similar to Venti and Zhongli when they gave up and lost their gnosis. I think it's gnosis, gnosis. 
Raiden's ambition, knowledge, and some of her memory taken and fading away, she becomes lost and desperate but can only remember so few. She remembers creating the eternity she was aiming for and she also remembers Ye, the previous Archon that bestows her power, but not as an Archon. We can say this is plausible because one of the people who lost their vision suddenly remembers that he was waiting for someone inside of Konda village, but with the slightest and faintest slither of memory. In Raiden Shogun's case, she only remembers Ye Miko's face, but doesn't remember her name. Moving on, Ye Miko knows more than Raiden, but can only help as her current self. This is why she can't do anything against Raiden Shogun. Yet. So she keeps doing her job as the chief priestess of the Shrine Maidens, similar to the third theory where Indra kills symbolic evil and evil presences, which is what Ye Miko and her Shrine Maidens are doing, keeping the evils beneath Inazuma from coming up. Raiden is forced in a corner, so she decides to take visions as a resort to make the eternity she barely remembers. And here's where you, the traveler, comes in to find all this out in patch 2.1 or 2.2. It kind of makes it the best plot to go for, and it also closes the plot hole to why she's acting that way and who might take her no sees or vision or ambition whatever's whatever's going to be taken from her but again take what i say with the amount of salt that you would put on the sea for all we know there might be some other third party controlling her and it, it's not even related to any mythology just some developer creativeness if you could say but that's all i have based on the mythologies that i could take about raiden shogun and the electro archon as well as the omnipresent god that she is trying to build and there you have it guys four possible theories to ball the electro archon and the future story for the inazuma arc i know this isn't 100 percent plausible all of this but i wanted to dip my hand in some theory crafting for who ball might be as well as what's going to happen for 2.1 leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more of my content and comment below if you have your own theories as to what's going to happen in 2.1 and 2.2 and who Ball actually is. Who knows, maybe when we reach the end of the story, we'll find out how close we were to the actual story based on these theories. Anyways, that's gonna be it for this video. I'll see you guys later. Bye!